This is the official movie for What If Goku Was an SCP. A continuation will happen, eventually. But first, I want to focus on other ideas that will be similar in nature. Make sure to stay until the end, as there is new content for this series in the form of an epilogue. Enjoy. So AI. Yeah. What if Goku was an SCP? That's a really dumb idea. Do not press that button. Do not. Planet Vegeta, a world doomed for destruction by an evil tyrant. Foreseeing the catastrophe that would beset their race, a Saiyan couple bids farewell to their infant son, destined for Earth. A planet infested with anomalies, even some that can threaten reality itself. How will our hero fare? A small drone is patrolling around the far reaches of our solar system, when suddenly, his scanners start going ballistic over an object traveling at well over double the speed of light. The small drone quickly pushes itself to the side, nearly avoiding collision with this spherical object. The drone scrambles a transmission to its command center, SCP-2399. SCP-2399 is a massive, complex mechanical structure located in Jupiter's lower atmosphere, also known as Jupiter's Great Red Spot. This SCP is mysterious and horrifying due to having both an endless energy supply and great weapons of mass destruction. It's only focused on repairing itself at the moment, but with the Foundation nuking and EMP in it, it must be annoyed if not concerned. Spotting the saying and knowing of the devastation just one of theirs can cause, it would be a fool not to take advantage of the situation. Command, unidentified spaceship entering our immediate solar system. Destination. With its current trajectory, the third planet from the solar system star. Show me. A Saiyan pod. Alert all units to avoid collision with it. The infant inside seems to have a weak battle power. Drone, attach yourself to its pod and mask yourself with it. Affirmative command. We don't know SCP-2399's true intentions. Whether they are friendly or detrimental towards Earth and humanity as a whole is a mystery, though the Foundation seems to assume the latter. Either way, it would want to preserve itself and ultimately achieve complete repair. But with the Foundation trying to destroy it, it might want to hinder them as best as it could. SCP-2399 senses Goku's battle power and knows of the Saiyan race. It even questions as to why they would bother to send even a weak Saiyan to conquer this part of the universe. Not knowing the full extent of the Foundation's power or even the various anomalies that plague the Earth, SCP-2399 still feels confident Goku should prove a nuisance. And if Goku could prove superior to any life form that resides within Earth, well... It'll just have to handle the saying itself. We cut back to the lone drone, as it is able to successfully attach itself to Goku's space pod. They finally breach Earth's atmosphere. Penetrating the planet's atmosphere. Pod clear for landing. Redirect to meet following parameters. Moon clearly visible. Tactical or strategic position held by our attackers. Scanning. Parameters met. Redirecting. Impact imminent. Impact. Returning to command. Negative drone. Remain in stealth and transmit video and audio. Focused on the Saiyan. Affirmative command. Transmitting. Meanwhile, at around the same time, SCP-179 is able to sense Goku. SCP-179 is a humanoid female, covered in matte black material and tattoos that sprawl through her midline. She believes to be the sister of the sun, therefore she wants to protect life on Earth. She points at threats heading towards Earth. She is capable of verbal communication. But after the Foundation has tried to abuse her good nature and have her work for them exclusively, she has limited herself to only communicating through gestures. Sensing a threat within the incoming Saiyan, she points at him. The Foundation is immediately notified, but not being able to detect anything due to SCP-2399 stealth technology, they grow confused. What? What is she pointing at? There's nothing in that section of space that we don't know of. The site director takes over, having the highest authority and being able to communicate in French. SCP-179's native tongue. 179, what are you pointing at? 
We've been checking for the last minute and there's nothing there. 179, if it's something dangerous, we need to know. 179, respond. The frustration of the director is palpable. He's concerned, not knowing what the hell could be approaching the earth. He picks up the phone next to him, ready to make a call to the O5 council, but is interrupted by a loud boom as Goku's space pod breaches the atmosphere, toppling him over. Facility currently under attack by an unknown entity. All security personnel please support to the outdoor research sector. All other staff please remain inside for your own safety. The director quickly jumps to his feet and exits his office into the chaos of the halls. Guards are gearing up and mobilizing. Researchers and staff are panicking. Some are even crying. The director dusts himself and heads towards the outdoor research sector. The sane infant opens his eyes as the pod slowly comes to an open. The cold night breeze sweeps across his face, sending chills all around him. Goku slowly crawls out of his confined pod and onto the disturbed earth around him. Being at the center of a large crater, he slowly begins his ascent, curious to the commotion up above. Security personnel scramble for positions and quickly start to surround the crater. They ready their firearms and await whatever this invasion could bring. They hear slow climbing and debris being shifted around as the invader creeps closer to the summit of the crater. Tension and anticipation is building as they are prepared for anything that can threaten the human race. Surely an invader from space could mean no good. Finally, they get their answer as the Saiyan reaches the summit. Everyone stands in disbelief as they did not expect the baby to stick its head out and crawl onto the ground. The site director finally comes into focus as he barges through the doors to see what has been transpiring. Give the orders, director. We'll neutralize the invader. The director is hesitant to give an order to attack a small child, but he has known anomalies to be inconspicuous and by their very nature, dangerous. Although curious about the weird child, he could not gamble the lives of everyone here. He gives the order to neutralize the threat. Before the director could give the order, the head researcher speaks up, being disgusted at the thought of harming a child. She argues efficacy, and he argues the greater good. There is no room for emotion when dealing with anomalous threats. Goku, amidst the yelling and being exposed to the elements, starts crying. The head researcher breaks formation and heeds the cries. She is instantly protective of the Saiyan infant. Guards, stand by. His shivering body catches her attention as she wraps him in her lab coat. Goku stops crying the instant he is wrapped and looks up at his savior, the only one who spoke up for him. He giggles at her, amusing the head researcher, removing all doubts she had of the Saiyan boy. She notes the only weird thing about him seems to be his tail and his hair. She stares lovingly into his eyes and he stares back. She can see the wonderlust in his eyes, his kindness and fortitude. Goku can see the stars right above, her smile and the moon. A primal energy unlocks within Goku, taking over his will. His eyes begin to glow red and a thick fur quickly envelops his body. His fangs protrude and his snout enlarges along with the rest of his body. Damn it, doctor. Get out of there. Guards. Open fire. She reacts quickly and drops the Saiyan. Landing on his feet, a barrage of bullets hit Goku all over his growing body. But it's too late. He stares down at the researcher. She's petrified, like a deer caught in headlights. The Saiyan stomps down on the head researcher, crushing her under his foot. Now, finally, in his completed Ozaru form. further into the complex, hold them back at all costs. If he destroys the site, how will truly break loose? The heavier sight defense guns all train onto the mighty Saiyan's backside and unload a heavy barrage of 50 cal fury. Goku quickly rotates to face the turrets, taking the storm of munitions head on. Annoyed by them, he prepares a key blast. Brace for impact. It's shooting something. The director didn't even recognize when the key blast was fired. 
but he felt the aftermath in the form of a shockwave that nearly dropped everyone around him to their feet. The heavy guns behind him were completely destroyed. Security began screaming and breaking formation as Goku began tearing through them. Some begged, some ran, but all were crushed. At Mr. Chaos, a young researcher rushes towards the director. Psych Director, Mobile Task Force ETA-5 are currently on another mission. The closest MTF unit is to arrive in 33 minutes. We don't have 33 minutes. That ape will unleash every single one of those abominations free if we do not stop him right now. Goku launches yet another key blast, destroying the left side of the facility. The director realizes that they cannot contain this creature with what they currently have. No matter how many guns they use, the great ape has no visible damage. They need an answer now and he thinks he has one. He orders the remaining guard to hold firm and that they cannot under any circumstances let that monster break the containment of the other SCPs. He rushes past the researchers and into the main right side complex. Thankfully, all SCPs are contained on the ground with various security protocols, but a singular key blast will break through every steel barrier they have. He takes the staircase and quickly descends further into the complex. He mulls over the plan. He could not possibly trust any of the sentient SCPs here with anything. But what choice does he have? Director, what's going on? What should I do? Shut up. Lower the temperature. The beta researcher complies, lowering the temperature of SCP-088. The temperature of the room quickly drops to a level just warm enough to reanimate SCP-088. He stares at the throne which SCP-088 is placed upon, so smug and devilish. SCP-088 opens his eyes and sets his gaze upon the doctor. He smiles. Why have you awakened me, human? I, we. Need your help. SCP-088 is a humanoid with slug-like features. He is over 6,000 years old and refers to himself as King Piccolo. He has various abilities that make him quite formidable and being able to spawn instances through his toxins. These toxins can be used as dangerous weapons as well, easily being able to melt through metals and other hardy materials. It's theorized that these toxins are fueled by his bioenergy, perhaps being able to use it in other ways. You want me to handle whatever is causing this commotion up there? No thanks, Doctor. I'd rather wait until it makes its way here. Then, I'll kill whatever it is myself. Listen, 088. What I'm offering is... You do not offer King Pickle anything. I take what I want and I do what I want. Now, you put me back to sleep, or I will paint this room red with your blood, and help whatever that thing is up there destroy every single one of you. Do you really think your safety is guaranteed? Once that thing finishes going through all of our securities, the finer measure to ensure nothing escapes, it's various nuclear warheads going off simultaneously. Explain. You felt the various blasts going up above? Yes. One of those is enough to level an entire city. Now, imagine thousands of those going off at the same time, disintegrating everything in its path at the molecular level. Not to mention the radiation. Silence, fool. You've made your point. I want this world intact for when I take it over. So it's best if I deal with this beast now. Give me more details. Ha! <laughs> you can't deal with an overgrown monkey. Well, I think its weakness should be either getting the moon out of his view, or complete removal or destruction of its tail. How do you know that'll work? I noticed when we attacked him, he changed his stance to protect his tail. Alright then, also, we won't have any problems with me using all of my abilities. N no. <laughs> Good. SCP-088 exits the main complex and onto the main battlefield, feeling the cool air upon his skin for who knows how long. He spots a wounded soldier. Oh, what have we here? The young soldier, delirious from blood loss and pain, looks up at the figure before him. Dad, Dad. I missed you so much, I I just want to go home. SCP-088 crouches down and extends an arm. The young soldier reaches out and takes his hand. So caring, so strong, just like you remembered his late father. Tell me, child. Y yes. Are you winning? 
The young man's vision focuses just enough to make out what's in front of him. A green devil. He tries to take his arm back, but SCP-088's grip is firm. No, get away from me. You're supposed to be. Don't worry, my son. We'll be winning soon enough. SCP-088 pulls him in close and vomits a toxin directly into the young soldier's mouth. He quickly begins to mutate. His wounds begin to close and his leg twists itself back into place. His body turns green and his muscles bulk. His facial features vanish and are replaced with one similar to that of his new master. He gets on his feet and sprouts wings from his back. Stand strong, my child. Stand, tambourine. I'm yours to command, master. SCP-088 stands smugly and admires the carnage splayed out before him. Mostly crushed bodies decorate the outside. And of course, Goku. <laughs> he looks even more ridiculous in person. Tamarine, get his attention. Yes, master. So, I'm going to refer to Tamarine as, well, Tamarine. His official name should be SCP-088-2, making King Piccolo SCP-088-1. But that's kind of a mouthful and I can do whatever I want. Tamarine flies right in front of Goku's face, spitting acid into one of his eyes. Goku swats at him, but Tamarine is fast. Goku turns around, directly facing SCP-088. That's right, you overgrown monkey. Look at me. Goku winces in pain from the acid, but now clearly focused on SCP-088. You know, you remind me of an ape that used to stalk my kingdom, always avoiding detection. Annoying little overgrown ape is what he was. Maybe you're related. You mean SCP-1000? SCP-088 tilts his head towards the implication. What? You mean you managed to catch that pest? Well, it wasn't easy. You see, this group... Goku bolts to close the distance between himself and SCP-088. He kicks the slug man into the building behind him. Master! SCP-088 gets up from the pile of rubble. He dusts himself. Ugh. You're fast for a bipedal hairball. SCP-088 tosses his weighted robes aside and cracks his neck. Enough playing around. Both slug devils engage Goku, working in tandem to defeat him. Goku is easily able to overpower both of them, but what they have is skill, intelligence, and their abilities. They start off by testing Goku's defenses, launching various toxins and acids onto Goku, proving to hurt him. SCP-088 devises a plan to distract the creature in order for him to remove his tail. He orders Tambourine to blind his eyes with acid while he sneakily gets behind Goku. With his wings and speed, Tambourine is able to weave and dodge Goku's attacks and dashes in front of him, spraying him with acid from his palms, targeting his other eye. Goku winces in pain while holding his eyes. SCP-088 climbs up his foot and gets on his back. I like the way you use your energy, kid. I think I'll take it as my own. SCP-088 mimics Goku's mouth laser. He summons all of his inner ki and focuses it on his mouth. He fires a devastating laser, completely cutting through Goku's tail. Goku's transformation begins to fade. He slowly starts to lose mass as he shrinks back down to his infant self. I have no idea what you are, but I cannot let you live in my kingdom. He picks up the baby, ready to put an end to this for good. The director knows Goku has to be eliminated, especially for what he did here today. He is far too unpredictable, but something inside of him is telling him not to let this kid die. He is far too intrigued by the Saiyan, and in this state, with his tail removed, perhaps he is no longer a threat. Stop at 088. He's unconscious. He's no longer a threat. I establish that you do not command me, human. After I'm done with him, I'm going to eviscerate you. A sniper shot goes off, tearing off SCP-088's arm and blowing a hole in his side. Ugh. Tambourine, we're leaving. Yes, master. Tambourine picks up SCP-088 and evades various other shots and the demons fly off into the night. Damn it, 
I missed. The MTF arrived just in time. Various MTF squad members flood the research area, securing the perimeter. All wearing the signature badge of Epsilon 11, Nine-Tailed Fox. They swarm Goku, now bloodied and unconscious. The director joins them. Go after 088. You do not command this director. He's no longer a threat. We're not blind, director. We'll leave the cleanup to you. The MTF, not seeing Goku as a threat, all scramble off to chase after SCP-088. The director is left with a mountain of corpses and a singular Saiyan child. He could sense SCP-682's key signature. It made Goku shake. SCP-682 now towering over him in his complete form. He lets out a low but deep growl at Goku. SCP-682 spins around and slams his tail onto the sand. He raises his now bloodied Boyd, still conscious. He begins to feel the acid burn him. After the battle of SCP-088, Goku, in critical condition, is sent off to the medical ward as he is barely clinging on to life. They rush him towards the medical ward It is thankfully still intact. Most personnel want to see him dead after what he has done, but the director says otherwise. A small Egyptian man walks up to Goku, astounded that a baby is still alive with the amount of damage he has sustained. He spends no time activating his abilities. SCP-208 is a short, hairy Egyptian man. He dons a mane much like a lion's that phases into his long beard. SCP-208 is capable of emitting a form of electromagnetic radiation that is capable of inducing rapid cellular regeneration. He is able to completely heal almost any physical injury. Due to his love of life and overall good nature, he is free to roam around the site and even help out the medical board. SCP-208 heals Goku regenerating his cells in an instant. The young Saiyan opens his eyes, spooking every worker around him. He starts flailing and screaming. The director holds him down, but he notices he is rather strong for an infant. Sedation. Now, he screams. They hold on Goku's arm and inject him with a clear substance, instantly calming him down and knocking him out. At around two years of age, Goku is too much to handle and too aggressive. Trying to stink attack anyone who visits him, they mainly calm him down by pairing him up with SCP-999. But sedation is sometimes necessary. The jelly-like creature calms him down, and the researchers are able to see his more gentler side. SCP-999 is a gelatinous orange slime being. Anyone who comes into contact with SCP-999 expresses great euphoria and relaxation. It seems to be attracted to the most troubled of individuals. More research concludes that Goku is not from Earth. He seems to resemble an average human apart from his tail. He possesses immense strength and endurance, and this constant need to fight and eat. They worry that with age, he will only hone these skills and become a big problem. So they introduce him to SCP-343, also known as God. SCP-343 is a human male, seemingly raceless. He refers to himself as God and is willingly contained in his chamber, being able to escape at any time he wants. He brings joy to anyone he talks to, and has boundless knowledge, they lead two-year-old Goku into his containment chamber. With the promise of food, Goku is ushered in by two guards flanking his side and the site director. 343, do you know who this is? Ah, now here's a rowdy one. Care to explain? Yeah, he's one of mine. Do you mind going into more detail? Before the site director can get an answer, SCP-343 sinks into the floor below him, disappearing completely without sounding any kind of alarm. 10 seconds later, he reappears behind Goku, which startles the barely walking toddler. In his hands is a basket of fresh fruits and vegetables. Try it, child. I could hear your stomach grumbling the second you walked in. Goku doesn't hesitate to take up the old man's offer and begins devouring the whole array of fruits and vegetables. I don't interfere with the natural cycle of my world, so I will only tell you this. His mind seems to be in disarray. His aggression is not his own. I understand. 343. Thank you for your time. Anytime, my child. With the permission of the O5 Council, the site director approves amnestics to be used on Goku. The use of this drug fixes Goku, basically substituting him hitting his head in the original Dragon Ball. He is much more responsive to human culture and teachings. He is kind and polite, but one thing did not change. His endless curiosity, his eagerness, and this sense to battle. Now, instead of trying to harm the researchers who entered his containment, he only seems to spook them or even try to attack them. At around the age of three, Goku was able to form his first sentence, I want to fight. At around the age of five, his weekly physical showed him gaining much more strength and endurance. 
easily being able to outpace and outmaneuver the researchers who looked over him. Around this time, they noticed that he was able to regrow his tail, but they permanently stopped it from growing again. Goku requested to fight, but the site director who seemed to take responsibility for Goku denied his request, as he didn't deem a 5 year old fit to fight anyone or anything. Instead, they upped his physical activities, running, lifting, swimming, and other sports. As Goku grew into his new life, he began to feel ever more bored with the activities and especially the people who were competing against him. That is until he was introduced to a martial artist. We can imagine this martial artist as a diet master Roshi. He trains Goku in martial arts and all the benefits that come along with it. Having access to a big gym all to himself, Goku gets to work with his master. He learns various fighting techniques and something called Ki, his life energy. As his master is human, not Dragon Ball human but regular human, he isn't able to teach him any sort of Ki blast or even flight. But Goku still learns the basics and since in this universe he is getting a much better education, making him a bit smarter but not by much. He is able to come up with his own techniques. The first thing that Goku is able to develop is key detection since this wouldn't be hard at all to learn seeing as Vegeta picked it up without even having anyone teach him, just saying intuition and adaptability. The second Goku is able to use key detection, he instantly picks up the key signatures that surround him. The first thing that he is able to pick up are the dark and huge key signatures throughout the facility, those of the other SCPs. There is one in particular that trounces everyone. This makes Goku very giddy. He asks his master whether he can sense what he can, but he isn't able to. Goku is able to develop his key further and apply it on himself, amping his physical abilities even further. None of the researchers even know just how powerful Goku is at this point. He asks every day to be allowed to fight whatever was given off that nasty key signature, but every day he was denied. Nothing riled Goku up anymore. None of the activities excited him. Now he only did them without key so he could develop a workout to stay in shape and to build an appetite as eating was something to look forward to every day. At around age 10, Goku had enough. His thirst for battle was far too great. It ate away at him every second of every day. I see Goku here a bit stronger than he was at the start of Dragon Ball. He remains physically active as that's all he could do and he's even smarter. Goku made up his mind. He was going to sneak out. He had only one target on his mind. He could sense SCP-682's key signature. He heard rumors of the unkillable lizard. Assuming this key signature belonged to this immortal lizard, it made Goku shake in excitement. He studied the way researchers entered and left his containment with a key card. All he had to do was blitz the researcher the next time they came to visit and snatch the key card and get out before the door closed. His containment procedures hadn't been updated since his memory was wiped, so the researchers always assumed his passivity. Remember, Goku stopped actually putting effort into his physicals. They don't really know what Goku is capable of. On a routine checkup, Goku played along following orders as he always did. But as soon as the checkup was done and the site director bid him farewell, Goku blitzed him so fast that he didn't even notice, snatching his key card and running past him and outside his chamber, right in front of the guards stationed outside. He didn't exactly think this through enough. Alarms went off, a containment breach. The guards ordered Goku to stop, but he didn't listen. He was destined for something else. They opened fire at him, but Goku easily dodged every bullet. Riot shields met him at the end of the hallway, along with grenade launchers with gas rounds. Goku thought fast and jumped above him into a ventilation vent. He was just small enough to be able to maneuver inside easily. All he could hear was SCP-9001 as breach containment. Along with SCP-682's key signature, he's able to pick up other key signatures. Some are completely surreal, ominous, and despicable, but he's able to focus on one in particular, one that makes Goku sweat the most. He dashes forward through the vents until he arrives at a large hallway filled to the brim with security guards, all fully decked out with specialized armor and weapons and not moving a single muscle. He can just about see the plaque hanging from the wall. SCP-682, Keter. SCP-682 is an immortal, lizard-like monster. He's extremely intelligent, fast, strong, and agile. He's able to come back from being completely destroyed and still able to hold a conversation. The SCP Foundation has tried almost everything to try to kill him. Heat, cold, radiation, even other SCPs. But every single time, SCP-682 is able to adapt to anything they throw at him. Becoming immune to it, he eats both organic and inorganic material to sustain himself. And that I forget to mention he hates all life and is constantly trying to escape. Goku looks ahead and determines that fighting his way through everyone will just complicate things. His real battle is just beyond that door, but how to access it? Well, duh, from this key card he stole from the director. 
Don't worry, he thinks. He'll just give it back when he's done with the fight. He sneaks past the security guards just above him, then slowly creeping his way closer and closer. He jumps down behind a guard and in front of SCP-682's chamber with no sound at all. A little something he learned from his master. The door opens. Every security guard turns around. Again, Cuckoo didn't think this through enough. Whoops. He smiles at them and says he'll only take a few rounds with him. He steps inside and closes the door. The guards lose their minds as they sound the alarm, a special one, SCP-682. Goku looks upon a large room with a big metal box at the end of the room. SCP-682 is just inside that box. He can sense him. He slowly walks up to the creature. He can hear something inside the metal box, slushing around. Hello, Mr. Lizard, Goku says. He hears scraping coming from the inside. Can't get out, huh? Don't worry, I'll help. Goku launches into the air and comes down hard with a kick, breaking the metal box SCP-682 is held in. A wave of hydrochloric acid spills out of the box, along with a green mass of mangled flesh and bones. Oh no, maybe I have the wrong room? You don't seem that tough. Why are you locked in here? The pile of flesh looks up and begins to regain its form, regenerating at an incredible rate. Whoa, is all Goku is able to say. SCP-682 now towering over him in his complete form. He lets out a low but deep growl at Goku. Goku takes his battle stance. Thank you. Why? You're welcome. I heard you were an evil creature bent on destruction, but I don't care about all that. All I want is a sparring partner. I want to fight. You're no different from them. SCP-682 lets out a louder, more aggressive growl. He slams his tail onto the floor, kicking up rubble and dust. <laughs> Come and find out. SCP-682 spins around and slams his tail onto the sand, catching him off guard. He sends Goku flying into the wall. SCP-682 roars, claiming a perfect victory, but Goku recovers quickly and uses the color of doves to conceal himself as he hops onto the monster's tail. He runs up his back and punches him directly at the base of his skull, slamming 682 into the ground. He jumps away and lands right where he starts. Sorry, but I'm not quitting yet. This is the most fun I've had ever. SCP-682 launches himself like a missile and aims directly at Goku with an intent to bite him. Goku dodges out of the way as SCP-682 slams onto the other side of the room. You're pretty fast for how big you are, but I'm faster. Goku and SCP-682 continue to fight. Even though Goku is faster than him, he can't seem to land a decisive blow. None of his attacks seem to do anything. Throughout the fight, Goku is able to keep up and dodge, but what SCP-682 has over him is intelligence and stamina. Goku, now moving slower, is caught off guard by SCP-682's tail, but instead of slamming into the sand, it curls around his ankle, entrapping him. No fair. Let me go. SCP-682 ignores him and slams Goku onto the floor, winning him and making him choke out blood. He continues to slam him again and again. He raises his now bloodied void, still conscious. Tough. SCP-682 opens his mouth and swallows him, while Goku screams not to be eaten. Goku is swallowed whole. He begins to feel the acid burn him as he is now inside SCP-682's stomach. The young Saiyan doesn't have much time as his skin is slowly melting away. But even in this hostile environment, Goku is able to recall his training and think. His only solution is to focus his key. He inhales and exhales, recalling the reports of his first landing and how he was able to channel his key. He takes his stance. He combines his teaching with the power he knows he has deep within. He chants, Ka Me Ha Me Ha his key swells into the palm of his hand, and with the last of his chant, he expels it forward in a beautiful blue laser. His blast rips a hole right through SCP-682 and hits the containment door, blowing it off. SCP-682 growls as Goku rips him a new hole. His intestines and stomach acid begins to leak and fall into the ground, along with Goku. Goku quickly hops out, suffering minor acid burns. Oh, come on now. I know you've suffered worse. Much worse. SCP-682 lunges at Goku and pounces on him. Goku, being damaged, can't dodge this one. He slams his claw onto the sand, making him scream. He digs his nails into Goku's body. SCP-682 opens his mouth, preparing to chomp him in half, even though Goku should be scared, pleading for his life. He isn't. The Saiyan has never had more fun than today. He's never felt more alive with a sense of purpose. Even though he has to die, he is content with this. He tried his best. He had a good fight. He looks up and smiles at SCP-682. The monstrosity is caught off guard, taken aback by this bravado. He hesitated for a split second, and that's all it took. In an instant, SCP-682 slid up various rocket launchers fired at him. He's blown to bits 
as finally, the security guards have been able to mount a proper resistance. This barrage of rockets is followed up by a heavy fire from all sides, staggering and stunning SCP-682. They pull Goku out, as they temporarily reclose the containment and flood the room of hydrochloric acid. More rockets are fired from up above to stop 682 from regenerating, until he's consumed, until he's consumed by the acid. He lets out a furious roar, but it's quickly deafened. He trashes around as the acid breaks him down bit by bit. Finally, he surrenders to the acid. The guards quickly seal SCP-682's containment chamber. The immortal lizard is finally subdued. After that, everyone's attention quickly shifts towards Goku. He grins and begins to formulate an apology, but he can't. He begins to feel drowsy, sleepy, then barely being able to maintain consciousness. That's when he notices the gas mask everyone's wearing just before drifting into an unwanted slumber. Goku wakes up to a hard concrete floor and his hands bound into steel manacles. His stomach grumbles. He jolts up, noticing the lack of heat in the room, a room he isn't familiar with, a room with a dim light just bright enough to cast a shadow. He looks around and can just about see the concrete walls and the familiar steel door. Looking down, he notices the steel cuffs on his wrist, just tight enough to give him a slight discomfort. Static invades the stagnant air. The intercom comes on. You've betrayed my trust, our trust, 9001. I cannot in good conscience protect you anymore. You wanted action, stimulation, fine, you'll get it. Trust isn't given, it's earned, over time. Cooperate, and we'll see where you go from here. But for now, you are foundation property, and are considered an anomalous threat to humanity. We run various tests and experiments to find out exactly what you are. Yeah, yeah, I'm hungry, but for lunch? And that's the nature of our first experiment. How efficient and how effective can you be when faced with starvation? Goku did not like the sound of that. I didn't do anything wrong. All I wanted was a fight, and I was getting bored. This isn't fair. Goku summons his inner key and effortlessly breaks his steel manacles. Hmm. Still effective at even one day without food. Looks like you barely broke a sweat. How do you have so much strength, and at such a young age? And it isn't nice that you're keeping Mr. Lizard locked away as well. Goku begins to walk towards the door, for he feels an ancient force stopping him from moving further. Goku is at the edge of the light that the dim bulb is emitting, and he can't seem to move past it. He lunges forward, but to no avail. He begins to panic and tries to run, jump, sprint, anything. He tries the opposite side, but the same thing happens. He's confined and is forced to stay within this light. That's when he notices it, which is barely visible in this lighting. An old, rusty nail. SCP-272 is an ancient iron nail. The nature of this nail prevents anyone from moving if it's pinned to their shadow and they cannot remove it. No matter how hard they try, outside assistance is required. I wouldn't recommend moving much. It won't favor you. That nail cannot be removed by you. And unless you want to be stretched thin, I wouldn't recommend destroying or moving the light source. Behave and you'll be rewarded. Goku was left alone. With no one to answer his pleads for freedom, he ignored the advice and began trying to lift the nail. It's just a piece of metal. How hard could it be to remove? He was strong after all. He squatted down and pinched the rusty metal and lifted, but he couldn't. He couldn't lift the nail. He tried again and again, but nothing. He summoned all of his key to his fingers and various muscles, bulking them, and again, he lifted. He felt a nudge ever so slightly, but he couldn't lift it completely. He huffed and puffed until his fingers bled and his face turned red, but all that he managed to remove was the skin on his finger. Goku slumped down, holding his injured fingers to his chest, never met anyone or anything he couldn't beat besides SCP-682. Goku's stomach grumbled, and with that, he laid down and tried to conserve his strength. Days passed by and Goku grows ever hungrier, but now his thirst seems to be a more pressing matter. He becomes visibly more emaciated every day. Goku tries to break free, and every day, he fails. On the third day, on one of his many attempts, his door opens, and a researcher with two guards flanking his side steps into the room. They see nothing, but the researcher is holding something. A vase. Goku breaks up, and through his dry, flaky throat, he speaks. Please, water. At least water. The researcher ignores his request and puts down the face before promptly exiting the cell and closing the door once more. Goku looks at the ceramic container. Perhaps there is food. He approaches the container, but is just out of reach, when suddenly a brown appendage spawns from the vase and quickly grabs his forearm. 
locking him in place. Goku takes his hand back as he watches this dog-like creature emerge from the ceramic face with ancient engravings. This creature is just an inch shorter than Goku, but what he lacks in height he makes up in girth and aggressiveness. Drew and froth are coming from his jaw as he flashes his canine and gets on all four. Goku takes his battle stance, but all he could think about is, how does this creature taste? SCP-019 is a large ceramic vase with classical Greek art decorating its exterior. Periodically, SCP-019 unleashes entities from within itself, known as SCP-019-2. They vary, but most tend to be small humanoids with animal-like features and are hostile. They are like glass cannons capable of dealing good damage, but overall have weak defenses. They pose a greater threat when multiple emerge. The dog-like creature throws himself towards Goku. Goku is easily able to dodge. Although the lack of light would severely cripple any fighter, Goku is able to heavily rely on his key. The dog closes in and goes for a bite, but Goku quickly jabs his snout, staggering the entity, and making him back off. Goku's stomach grumbles. Damn, he thinks to himself, should have ended it there. Next time, for sure. But as he finishes his thought, he feels a pair of claws digging into his legs, further constraining him. Damn, he didn't even pick up his key signature because he was too focused on food. He looks down to a grey cat-like creature, perhaps a friend of the dogs, with the cat monster constraining him. The canine monster takes this opportunity to attack yet again. He charges on all fours, ready to put his entire weight on Goku. He lunges once more, this time making contact with him. But instead of making contact with a fleshy meat sack, he instead smashes hard into the steel-like body of this same. Goku embraces the dog and begins crushing it. Mimi, you just need a hug. Goku's embrace tightens as he begins to crack the dog's ribcage, making a yelp. The cat lets go of his legs and jumps up, sinking his teeth into the Saiyan's neck. But instead of biting into flesh, it feels as if it's biting into a brick wall, and the delicate teeth shatter amidst the toughness. Goku squeezes the life out of the dog and tosses it aside. He looks at the feline monster as it seems to shudder in fear and punches it, sending it flying into the concrete wall as it splatters all over. Damn, didn't mean to send it flying. Well, at least I still have. Goku notices the light dim even further, completely constraining him to where he stands. He can't even walk towards the corpse of the dog that is just about four feet away from him. He is completely immobile, not being able to take a single step. Just then, his containment door flings open, and three men in orange jumpsuits walk in. The intercom once again comes to life. Do not interact with SCP-9001, just make sure to clean up and hurry before more spawn. The three men get to work, cleaning the corpses of the entities and hauling them off. As they're working, Goku pleads for food, water, anything. The men pay no heed and do as they're told. They were all chosen for this, all being from dark criminal backgrounds. All even seemed to find some pleasure in the young boy's pleading. One of them, a skinny, pale, elderly man, taunts Goku as he begins to describe what they had for dinner in a manner that emphasizes how good and tasty the food was. Although in truth, it wasn't very tasty. Goku begins to drool and imagines what he is describing. Do not interact with SCP-9001. As the director is reprimanding, the vase again starts to spill out more entities. Watch out, more are coming. Three talons begin forming and coming out along with dark wings and beaks. A full avian head comes forth and pecks at the elderly man right in the shoulder as two more avian creatures break free, all standing well above Goku's head. Get out! Goku tries to break free once again, but again he is confined. The three corvids begin tearing and pecking at the elderly man. He screams as his face is packed and filled with holes, and one by one, his eyes are popped out and consumed. The two remaining men frantically run towards the door. The three birds look towards Goku, and as if by instinct, ignore him and head towards the two remaining men. All Goku can do is look on as the men are drowned in black feathers followed by pools of blood under them. The light brightens just a bit to give him some room, and the birds perch up and race towards Goku. They spread out, one heading right for him, and two going for his flanks. Feeling no weakness from the lack of food and water, nonetheless, he prepares for battle. They rush him in a blur of black. He's able to dodge two, but the third grapples his arm. The second recovers quickly and goes for a talon kick. Goku counters this with his own kick to deflect it and uses his free arm to come down with a punch to break the first bird's wing, sending him to the ground. That's when he feels the beak from the one who's grappling him pierce his shoulder, drawing blood. The one who was deflected recovers and pecks Goku's chest, proving to pierce him. They aren't deep, 
but still, they are hurt. The one on the floor comes up and pecks him in the stomach. Goku winces in pain. The three birds then ferociously begin to peck all over his body, and Goku being in a weakened state is forced to tank all of these pecks. He begins to feel the pressure and the pain. He begins to feel dizzy from the dozens of wounds that sprawl his body. His key begins to swell in his chest, and then all over. He feels the key bubbling up and up, and then he feels it leak as his anger starts to take over. All at once, he unleashes it from every orifice of his body in a stunning bright light, sending the birds flying into the wall, splattering them all over. This explosion of ki is so strong and so bright that it engulfs the whole room as if it were daylight, and therefore eliminating the shadow and breaking him free of the nail's curse. Goku is finally released from his confinement, but his overall weakness and injuries quickly bring him back to realization. He can see his own pool of blood start to form under his feet. His knees wobble and then give out. Being starved and dehydrated for nearly three days and being heavily injured, he collapses and slowly loses consciousness. He bleeds out on a hard concrete floor. The director, having been witness to all that has transpired, sits in astonishment at the power and battle technique displayed by the young boy. His previous intelligence has showed him to have below average IQ, but this battle displayed quite the contrary, at least in terms of battle, being able to cope with malnutrition, dehydration, and massive injuries, and still being able to dispatch five enemies. He gives the okay to rescue the Saiyan child and medically treat him. Goku awakens to a white sterile ceiling. He sits up and examines his surroundings. He seems to be in the medical ward and no longer hungry. He notices that he isn't restrained, but quickly checks his shadow to see if he sees any nails. None to be found. His door opens and he quickly jumps off his bed, landing on his feet. The director walks in with no guards. Goku tenses up, but he doesn't sense any malintent. The director pulls up a chair and sits. Sit down 9001. Let's talk. Goku ignores the command and remains vigilant. Listen, SCP-9001, I won't put you through something like that again. I merely had to save face for my failure in containing you. I know that you aren't a threat to humanity, or even to us. You merely got curious and frustrated due to what I presume is your instinct and your abnormal thirst for battle. It was wrong for me to ignore you and your needs. I was not able to provide you with sufficient cross tests. In the future, I'm sure these cross tests will benefit both you and the Foundation. F future? Of course, we'll provide you with ample cross tests. Battles for you to satisfy your needs with. Goku is unable to hold his excitement. Battles? More battles? With those weird animals? With Mr. Lizard? With those other key signatures that he picked up? He felt genuine excitement. But still, but he still felt uneasy. Could the director be telling the truth? I, I want to go out. Out. The director slides his chair closer to Goku. Who put that idea into your head? No one. I can hear what you guys are talking about. Not just about the SCPs, but about the guards' life. Their home, kids, bars, drinks. Most of my teachers didn't come from here. I can tell when they're lying. You want the truth? Yes. There is an outside. A world much bigger than what you know. A world with lush greenery and billions of people who all have stories to tell. A world with various foods and various areas to explore. It's also an area where you wouldn't fit in. Why? All of what you just said is fantastic. I want to go. Outside there are rules. Norms, which you must first become accustomed to. There are also no battles out there. There is no one out there who might even come to a fraction of your power. Every single thing that can even pose a challenge to you is here and spread across our other facilities. I know what you want, what you need, and if you help us secure, contain, and protect humanity against anomalous threats, then I can guarantee lifelong battles and in the future, a chance to see the wider world. Goku looks distressed. He greatly desired to explore, to have an adventure, to see what's out there. But his raw sane instinct just couldn't pass up progress. Progress towards perfecting his body, mind, and ki to be the best fighter he could possibly be. And he couldn't pick up any lies. The director held out his hand. And Goku took it. Beneath their feet, and beneath the layers of thick reinforced steel, something stirred. Researchers toiled at their assigned tasks and guards yawned and contemplated their employment. But even beyond them, inside of the recently sealed containment room, where a sane child had a battle of the hard to kill lizard, SCP-682 continued to stir and think. That child was not killer, but 
power was not human. That energy was bright and pure. Pure, bright, indestructive. Even within the hydrochloric acid tearing him apart and preventing him from regenerating, he's still able to use his most powerful ability, the power to adapt. SCP-682 focuses on his previous encounter and thinks about how the boy was able to emit such energy, how he knew who he was beforehand. He wasn't part of his captors, and he wasn't part of those pathetic or interrobed humans they sent in as fodder. No, he was like him. He was imprisoned. SCP-682 closes his eyes, and he feels it bubble up. His ability, or rather his curse, to not die, but instead adapt in a whole new sense unlocks before him. He senses himself, his own life force, and then he picks up where the boy who fought him is, meters above him, and he's talking with the director. And with that, an explosion of key signatures appear before him. He's able to sense everyone, the guards outside, the researchers writing frantically, the man's security rooms keeping an eye on him, the D-class personnel shifting in their cells, but most importantly, around him, all the other key signatures, much bigger and some much more malevolent than any human. Coco accepts his new deal with the site director. With Coco being cooperative and trainable, they change him from safe to thaumiel. Eating, sleeping, and plenty of fighting. What more could Goku need? And now, let's get to some cross tests. Goku dons a white gi with the SCP logo etched on his left. We see Goku stretching before the door to the testing area swings open and a young bald boy not much older than himself walks in. Goku didn't know they kept other boys his age in here. He seems elated, but curiously, he senses the boy to be not strong at all. He thought he was facing strong opponents. Goku pouts. You aren't strong. What's your name? The bald headed boy visibly gets red and starts yelling at Goku. I am strong. Stronger than you in fact. They said so. He makes a circle in the air, as if to be pointing to various creatures at the same time. Goku looks confused, but accepts his new opponent's remarks. Fine, if you're stronger, then prove it. And you haven't given me your name. Krillin. Yours. Uh, I don't have one, but the director calls me 9001. Don't have a name, well... Boys, please, this is a cross test. We are not here to socialize. Please take yourselves towards the indicated markers on the floor so we can start. Remember, this is a test. Please refrain from killing each other or severely damaging the room. This test will only last a minute or by knockout. Feel free to use your abilities. In moderation, of course, on the whistle, you'll begin. Krillin and Goku both assume their positions and wait for the whistle. Good luck. Ha, I know you need it. Goku begins running towards his new bald acquaintance, Krillin's marks. One moment, Goku is only able to sense Krillin, but all of a sudden, begins sensing Krillin everywhere. Thousands and thousands of Krillins all of a sudden are occupying this room. Visibly, it's the same. One moment, all he sees is Krillin. Next, a black swarm is enveloping the room. The black swarm form a wall right in front of Goku, and Goku mindlessly runs into it. Feels thousands of pricks all over his body, all trying to break through his skin. Luckily, with the help of his key, he's able to avoid any damage. He flings himself back, but the swarm is persistent. He jumps, runs, and overall tries to get out of the storm, but they won't let up. I've never met anyone who even lasted this long. Usually, they end up cut into pieces. No wonder they wanted me to fight you. SCP-2004 is a semi-organic nanomachine colony that imprints itself to a host between the ages of 4 and 14. They follow the host around and protect him or her from anything. They're completely obedient. They're impossible to perceive with organic senses and only make themselves known when they're activated by the host. They're fast, strong, intelligent, and are able to regenerate itself with the consumption of flesh. It is not entirely known why they choose children as their host with the foundation investigating. It seems SCP-204 is more intelligent than what they are given credit for. Goku begins throwing punches that will beyond any human's reaction speed, but their agility, intelligence, and swarm-like nature prevents Goku from truly damaging them. To break through his defenses before he does any damage, they begin trying to tunnel into his ears, eyes, and even nose, but he's able to defend himself with Ki but at the cost of losing most of his senses. With all of the nanomachines storming him, he can't seem to focus, so again, he has to solely depend on his key. He looks past the swarm and begins focusing on the biggest key signature. The young Saiyan boy sprints towards it, towards Krillin. Within a second, he's upon the bald child and he throws a punch. A form of shield meets his fist, preventing Goku from landing a blow on the host of SCP-204. He tries and tries again, punches, kicks, elbows, knees, even bites. Nothing is able to penetrate, 
The defense is just too good. He tries to focus more on speed, but SUV Thunder falls way faster. Goku starts to feel them penetrate his key barrier and pierce his skin, drawing blood. He can't afford to recklessly waste key if he wants to keep himself from getting cut into pieces. Ha! You can't do anything to me. I'm invincible. You better call quits before they tear through you completely. Goku, not being able to exactly hear, is still able to know when someone is taunting him. Fine. If he wants to hide behind those bugs, he'll just have to burn right through them. Goku backflips to gain some distance and cups his hands. He summons all of his ki, leaving just a bare minimum to provide some defense. His ki swells and bubbles up from within. It concentrates on his palms as he begins to chant. The test is off. I repeat, the test is off. SCP-9001, SCP-204, stand down. Goku could not hear the command, as the buzzing sensation is the only thing he could truly hear. Alright guys, you heard him. Stand down. Why should we? You and me, us together, we're the strongest there is. We cannot let such a creature like this one continue to exist. For he may one day threaten us. We need to end him now. Uh, no. Get off him, it's, it's called off. We'll get in trouble. Trouble? We are the trouble. We can destroy both him and everyone else in this facility. Do not let this opportunity go in vain. He can't hold any longer. His defenses will break and we will chop him to bits and pieces. Oh, okay, finish it then. I told you to stop. Goku feels them start to dig further into his skin, but his energy wave is done. He expels nearly all of his energy in a big blue laser directly entirely on the host of SCP-204. Krillin begins to freak out, not being able to react in time, so his SCP takes over. They begin forming shields right in front of their host, trying to protect them. Most of SCP-204 leaves Goku and goes to protect their host. Three shields form, and Goku's Kamehameha breaks through two shields, but struggles at the third, as it seems to be the strongest. Goku pulls all of his energy into this blast, forgoing all of his defenses, and the remaining nanomachine still attacking him, digging. It's a race to see who can last the longest. Goku grits his teeth, and various nanomachines squirm into his flesh and start to break him down from the inside. He can feel them everywhere, but just before they can touch any vital organ, his energy beam breaks through the shield, making direct contact with Krillin and sending him flying into the wall. And at the end, he redirects it into the ceiling, making it explode. As even though through severe hostility and being near death, he never considered killing his opponent. SCP-939 is a skinless quadruped, able to use mimicry to lure in its prey. They have no organs, even completely devoid of having a brain, and are able to administer lethal force via their teeth or claws. They are also able to administer a sort of amnestics, causing amnesia in the victims to make them forget about SCP-939 in case they ever got away. Goku at this point is well beyond creatures such as SCP-939. For anyone to hurt Goku at this stage, they need to be capable of immense power, enough to crack through his natural key, defense, or somehow find a way to survive Goku's onslaught and deplete him of his key. 939 it isn't that creature. The only trouble they give him is memory loss or perhaps confusion with the mimicry powers. But after his Senkai boost from SCP-682 and SCP-204, he has a vastly more powerful than in, in even canon Dragon Ball. I'd say his power level is around 120. Now, is 120 high? Maybe. But I think Saiyans are also able to adapt to the surrounding enemies. Goku being at a stage where he has to be powerful to be able to keep up with creatures well beyond what Dragon Ball and even some DBC characters can dish out. Goku continues to have cross tests with various SCPs and more tests with SCP-204. Fights SCPs like SCP-749, 3199, 089, 019. SCPs who are deemed just weak enough for Goku to handle. This satisfies Goku for a time and in a blink of an eye, he's 13 and already is exploding in newfound power. But not as much growth as he got from SCP-682. Goku once again grows bored. He acts to fight the more dangerous SCPs, but the Foundation just cannot risk a valuable asset like Goku. There are other SCPs still loose, and SCP-088 still evades capture. They've gotten reports of 088 completely destroying MTF squads. The 
best of the best and even being able to hold off MTF Squad and Omega 7 which contains the monster that is SCP-076 also known as Abel. Goku is denied and told to train more and to train in recapturing instead of annihilating his opponents. Goku obliges but once again he's growing disillusioned but that won't last for long. SCP-682 feels the fire in his gut and it begins to charge up its newfound power. This power to know where everyone is. This raw intense power within himself that only he could possibly hope to master. It's been years since his battle with that child and now he'll show him real power. While Goku is trying to talk his way into a fight with SCP-096, he begins to feel it and he begins to sweat. What is that immense power? It's rising. 9001, what are you on about? They said it too, but what is that? Like a volcano erupting. We're not safe. It's nowhere near stopping. SCP-682 scans his surroundings and finds Goku. And he fires off his mouth beam directly towards the Saiyan. Get down! The energy beam tears through layers and layers of steel and concrete. Goku wastes no time to retaliate with his own Kamehameha wave. He's barely able to unleash it in time as the beam is right in front of him. Beam struggle ensues and Goku is much weaker if he had no way of charging it. Green meets blue in a stunning show of power. Goku struggles to redirect it. It's just so powerful it feels as though he'll be consumed if he lets up for even a second. He summons all of his ki and pours it into his beam, but still, it isn't enough. He digs for more ki and he reserves. He has left, but nothing comes up. At this rate, he won't be able to protect them his newfound family. That's when he feels hundreds of pricks all over his back. He shudders. Krillin, is that you? Don't attack me. Leave. I don't think I can hold it. This pressure is immense. Don't bite them. They said it could help. Goku begins to feel this artificial energy source pouring through his back. Is Krillin giving him energy? It feels really weird, but it's enough to further fuel his energy beam. Goku pours everything that SCP-204 gave him back into his beam and it's just enough. He redirects the beam upward and sends it flying into space. It tears through the entire facility as sunlight pours in from the outside and the beam dissipates into the sky. <sighs> I, I didn't know you could do that. Me neither. They said they could help and they did. That's when the lights turn off. After some seconds the backup generators kick up and the intercom comes to life. Containment breach, I repeat, site-wide containment breach of various SCPs, including but not limited to SCP-682, SCP-106, SCP-939, SCP-173, SCP-049, SC- Wait, wait, please, don't, don't touch me, ah! SCP-9001, also known as Goku, and SCP-204, also known as Krillin, have just barely managed to deflect SCP-682's energy beam. They are left drained of much of their power and at a loss of words as the entire facility has gone into lockdown due to a containment breach set off by the hard to kill lizard. The site director, having been forced to the ground due to the immense beam struggle, is the first to compose himself and get back on his feet. The director notices how calm and more sure of himself SCP-204 is around SCP-9001. He was never this cooperative, maybe he really did just need a friend, but he couldn't entrust everything to these boys. He knew far better than them the destruction and death these recently released SCPs would bring. They were not merciful or even able to be reasoned with in any way. Having worked closely with all of them, most were either selfish, pure evil, or both. Boys, we need to head towards the main entrance and get out of here. Let security and the MTF squads deal with this. The site director's words fell on deaf ears. He looks at Krillin's expression and he can easily tell that the young child is scared. Being the smarter of the pair, he knows that this is no game. He glances towards Goku and his facial expression couldn't be any different. Although SCP-9001 looked depleted from expelling almost all of his key, his eyes were filled with excitement and he couldn't help but smile at this life-threatening situation. This boy, or rather Saiyan, was truly a warrior whose only purpose was to fight. Don't even think about it, 9001. There's a reason why I cannot let you fight the other SCPs. These are well above your skill level. The site director should have known better, as his words only seemed to encourage the boy even further. But even though Goku desired to have more battles, 
He couldn't help but also notice all of the lesser power levels start to drop like flies. There are people stuck on the ground that need our help. Let me do what I've been training for. Let me help them. You are not ready, not to mention your stamina or what you call key has been depleted with that last struggle. You're not going to do anything. Let's go. Not until Fox has a quick response time. We will follow protocol. Quick? People are dying. I can help. 9001, you will not disobey my orders and you will follow me out the main gate. I, I think 9000 is right. We can let all these people die. The least we can do is help the people on this level. You guys are not listening. A researcher's body plops down onto the floor in between them. Her soft decomposed skull turns to mush when it makes contact with the hard floor, standing everyone around her. Goku and Krillin exude confusion. I know the rector exudes fear. He shoves the boys towards the door of the office they were in and quickly rummages for his keycard. An old decomposed man faces to the ceiling, just enough for him to peep at his new prey. He could sense the fear in a sight director and from the bald-headed boy, but oddly enough, none from the spiky-haired kid. He cackles to himself and launches his trap. Right in front of the director, a hand emerges from a black puddle on the floor. It holds the director by the neck and begins crushing his throat. Goku quickly picks up his dark, disgusting key signature. It's vastly different from any living thing he's ever faced. And on top of that, beyond its goopy black puddle, he can sense that his key signature is never-ending, infinite. Nonetheless, Goku springs into action quickly going for a karate chop on the old man's exposed forearm. But before he could really do anything, another rotting portal opens up above. This distracts Goku as he picks up various weak key signatures. People near death, 17 near corpses fall down from the ceiling. Goku abandons his rescue plan to save the director as these people take precedent. Krillin snaps out of his stupor and goes to assist. He summons his colony and forms nets to catch them. Between the two of them, they're able to save all of the fallen bodies. They safely lay them down, trying not to harm their delicate rotten skin. They quickly shift to save the director, but he and SCP-106 are long gone. Having a close look at the bodies, they truly look like they've been decomposing for a long time. A young researcher puts his hand up and Goku grasps it. Goku feels his fingers start to sink into the yellow-like flesh. He goes to remove his hand, but using all of his remaining strength, the young researcher tightens his grip and stares at Goku's face. His expression changes from fear to acceptance and determination. He parts his blackened lips. Leave! The young researcher's hand falls apart at the conviction at which he spoke. Within seconds, everybody begins to inflate and blow, giving off a disgusting smell of raw excrement and death. Goku steps back as everyone's kicks his signatures begin to rise. All it took was one to start off a chain reaction of continuous explosions. Guts, rotted blood, and gunk painted the interior of this office. Krillin quickly shielded himself and provided Goku with one as well, but being so close to the explosion, it could only negate so much. The pressure quickly overpowered the nano machines protecting Goku, sending him flying backwards into the wall. This is a continuation of my series, What If Goku Was an SCP? Please make sure to like and subscribe and yeah. Enjoy the video. SCP-106 appears to be an elderly humanoid male with a rotted exterior. His motivation seems to be his love of pain and torture inflicted upon humans between the ages of 10 and 25. He has various abilities to accomplish this motivation, such as hibernation, shape-shifting, facing through solid objects, the ability to write anything, and most importantly, the ability to enter and exit his own pocket dimension, in which he is quite literally my god. Goku lays in a bottle of rotted flesh, blood, and excrement, pieces of organs dangling from his head and shoulders. The young Saiyan slowly fades in and out of consciousness as his friend Krillin approaches him. Within five minutes, Krillin's world went from complacency to an utter nightmare. He had known there were dangerous creatures housed within the same facility he and his new friend Goku were in. Ever since his battle with Goku, he had accepted his inferiority to him quelling the consisting urges he had to get revenge. SCP, or rather, himself, was to blame for this contradicting feeling. Ever since he was four, he had lost himself within his new identity, not really knowing who he was before. But now, in this true test of his courage, his true self showed itself. He wanted to approach and help his friend, but they told him otherwise. 30% of us is what's left to treat, consume, and I, we do not belong here. We, we can't leave him. We're not leaving him. He's dead. We're not descending above us his breach. Escape is a certainty. Krillin wanted to contest his flawed logic, but he couldn't. 
the dark hallways, the screaming and the tumbling of walls he could hear, it all served to make him doubt himself and his selflessness. In his own contemplation, he never noticed the second cuckoo began to sink into a black puddle. The Saiyan boy surrendered his consciousness to it along with his fate. The beam struggle that ensued between the Saiyan and a hard to kill lizard had barreled completely through the entirety of the power room knocking out the main grid. Even one second of the power malfunctioning has delved every denizen in his facility, worker or not, into a world of nightmares. He was beautiful, but no one was there to appreciate him. Well, that wasn't entirely true. On occasion, orange-clad misfits came to him. They kept him company, and they polished him as he should. But most importantly, they looked at him. But instead of admiration, their eyes were filled with terror. When they looked away, that's when it got him really angry. Why couldn't they understand that perfection was right in front of them? Not even their basic needs should have come above looking. But when they did, they paid the ultimate price. All it took was a second without power for him to barge right through the steel door and start helping these apes remember what they were missing out on. And if they ever dare disrespect him, well, he'll just make them regret it. Tweezers pick through a severed appendage, too mangled to identify the creature it belonged to. But the plagued mass doctor paid no heed to such an irrelevant detail. His mission was far too important to pay attention to such trifles going around him. He had convinced his captors to award him fresh human corpses to experiment on. And at this moment, said corpses were assisting him in provoking the muscles in his newly acquired animal. The zombie walked toward the other side of the room and struggled to pick up a small saw. That's when it happened. The first time in quite a long time for the intention of the plague doctor to be taken away from him. A sudden laser ripped right through his floor and consumed his zombified assistant. Seeing an opportunity to extend his research to more reactionary subjects, he made his way down and out of his containment cell and into the chaos. Why couldn't they just leave him alone? Why can't they understand that he isn't worth it? Their gaze just brought him pain and anguish. He was finally secluded from them from prying eyes, but once again, they just had to look. One moment he was safe in his dark box, and the next, he was being lifted and melted by a beam of pure energy, tore right through his home, and someone just had to look. Couldn't they understand it, it just made him angry. He didn't want to kill, but they made him, and if it took him erasing every pair of eyes that could possibly enrage him, he would do it so that he can finally be alone. Goku's head pulses heavily. He awakens from a restless sleep. He struggles to open his eyes as they are sticky with dried blood. His wounds thought his head had been half sealed from the dried blood clinging all over him. He's never been this weak before. He can't seem to find his bearings. With his normal senses seeing as the majority of his ki has been drained from his previous struggle. The last thing he remembered was being sunk into the floor by the same black puddle that the director was forced into by that old man. So where was he? Did they not go to the same place? Goku stood up and started walking with a limp. He was at the end of a long hallway and the lights flickered on and off. He sensed them. Various creatures he had encountered before. Three or four. And at the end of the hallway. Help, help, don't leave. Various instances of SCP-939 blocked the end of the hallway and started whispering towards Goku. Goku knew these creatures. They were weak, malicious tricksters. But being injured and depleted himself was really right for him to think of them as weak, especially being outnumbered. Nevertheless, Goku took his battle stance and focused on the hell to come. Four skinless canines guard the end of the hallway. They carefully trot forward and stop at the middle. They eye Goku down, measuring him up. Oh, there you are. Come here. They speak in words that aren't theirs. Goku ignores the petty attempts to scare him and is super focused on the inevitable conflict before him. How effectively could he kill these things? In that instant, he detects a fifth crawling through the vents above. In the half second that he looks up, the four at the end of the hallway enter into a full sprint and the one above crashes right through, diving straight at the injured Saiyan child. Goku without really thinking lodges himself up, uppercutting the one diving for him. Along with the falling SCP-939, various pipes were also falling. He grabs one of the midair and throws it like a javelin right into the leader's leg, piercing right through him, making him fall over, disrupting the sprints of the others. The one coming through the vents gets him flying upwards and smashes his cranium onto the metal vents, killing him and getting his core stuck. It dangles and drips blood right in front of Goku, and he lands on his feet. The three remaining canines rush past their falling, and all three go for a bite at Goku. Goku leans all the way back, and Ronhouse kicks the farthest one on the left, sending him right into the other two. He backflips to gain some distance. The remaining instances of SCP-939, sensing that even weakened, this boy is too much for them to handle. They start to scurry off, but who wastes no time in retaliating his own offensive? He runs towards and jumps. He aims with his feet as he descends with great force and aims at the middle of the remaining two. 
he lands directly on the head of the one in the back and on the high lengths of the one farthest away from him, killing one and disabling the other. Goku then proceeds to grab the crippled one from the back and suplex him bending its spine until it splits in two, killing it. He lifts himself and looks at the massacre he just made with them. He felt bad, but deep down, he knew they couldn't be left to their own devices. Lest they pile up more corpses, Goku began walking through the maze-like layout of the facility, coming across various empty rooms and corpses. His key slowly recovered, allowing him to increase his radius on his key detection. He specifically searched for the old man that attacked him, and Krillin. He found neither. Just a big power level of SCP-682, he could hear the lizard tearing through walls as he seemed to be engaged with something else. He decided to make his way towards them and also stop in his madness. Goku had no clue which door or which hallways led him to where he needed to go. He only knew the general direction of his destination until finally he came across a long hallway with various containment chambers on both sides. He never really bothered to learn of the other SCPs. So all of the numbers really meant nothing to him. All of them were locked behind a card scanner, which he didn't have, nor wanted to expend the little energy he had in destroying the door. He finally came to end of the hallway and began trying to slide the door open, except it was stuck, locked rather. It required a key card, which Goku did not have. He began considering whether it was better to just tear the door down or conserve his energy and find another way through. As he pondered this decision, he sensed something behind him. He spun around and walked forward. He didn't see anyone besides a strange sculpture. Wait, was this here before? Goku could have sworn that this part of the hallway was empty when he walked past not 10 seconds ago, but his key detection could play no tricks on him. Clearly, they detected a key signature coming from the sculpture. Goku then proceeded to blink as he finished that thought. Another one of them, who dared take their eyes away from his beauty. How many had to die before they truly understood that he was the only thing worth appreciating? The sculpture had added another researcher's body to his kill count. He stepped over the recently deceased as he crushed his bones with each step. He continued to wander the halls and continued to massacre. Some gave him the attention he needed, but they always faltered and therefore they always died. He found some disgusting dog-like creatures all executed rather brutally, which he seemed to admire. One of them was still alive and it stopped him in his tracks. Would this creature be any different from his previous encounter? All he could do is be patient as it stared, and then it jolted as a loud crash was heard above. It instinctively looked towards it, and once again, SCP-173 grew angry, and he broke its neck, like all of them, before him. SCP-173 is a mysterious entity, seemingly encased in a concrete and rebar structure. A line of sight must be held. If not, SCP-173 will proceed to break or strangle the neck of its victim. It secretes a brown liquid composed of blood and feces. It moves at incredible speeds and is immeasurably strong. SCP-173 followed the trail of corpses, looking for the perpetrator of these killings. Maybe they would be able to provide what he needed. Shuffling through the halls at incredible speeds, he followed the stench of rotting flesh and blood, not too dissimilar to himself. SCP-173 finally came across the hallway and made a turn and stopped dead in his tracks. At the end of this hallway stood a young boy with spiky hair covered in black blood. He again stood still and waited. His life had been nothing but disappointment, but with this boy, he felt something different. Not only could he tell that this one was without fear, but could also feel a strong sight on him. Or rather, looking into him more deeply, two sets of sights upon him. He was sure no one else was near them. No one else could possibly be looking upon him. He stood there like the statue he was, meant to be, still and spectacular. And the boy blinked. The young boy blinked, but he didn't feel it. He didn't feel the disrespect, nor the anger he had always felt. Even though this creature just blinked, he kept on looking. He stared directly into him. He looked beyond his outer casing and peeked inside. He fell naked in front of him, and he felt like he finally found someone who could truly appreciate him for what he was. Again, the young boy blinked, and again, SCP-173 felt nothing, and that made him so happy. He began securing his brown liquid in excitement. Finally, someone who understood him, someone who admired him not only from the outside or from the inside, someone who loved him. Goku looked at the statue rather confused. Did you really miss something? No, he didn't. A strong key signature was cleared inside that casing. He approached it cautiously, expecting it to attack him like every single thing so far. The sculpture made no move besides expelling some sort of brown liquid that made Goku flinch and gasp at its awful smell. Although he didn't smell so good himself, he came within arm's length and examined it much more closely, a rather mediocre spray paint drawing on a mess of concrete and rusted rebar. The roommate this had a strange sense of art, but Goku paid no mind to it as he seemed to find it rather amusing. 
He poked it and it made no reaction. He began touching it and applying small amounts of force towards it. It was surprisingly sturdy for a jumbled mess of construction material. He looked at his face and smiled at it, but it made no move, no reaction whatsoever to Goku's handling. Goku stepped back and looked puzzled. He instead went back towards the steel door and prepared to strike it down. That's when Goku heard a scraping of concrete against metal. He quickly turned and saw that the statue was right behind him. It had moved rather quickly, way faster than even Goku could move. Goku stopped trying to rationalize SCP-173 existence or its motive. Its key signature gave off strong but selfish vibes, but it didn't seem to be hostile towards him, so he paid him no mind. Goku summoned some key and punched the door down so he can progress. Goku continued to crawl through the dimly lit facility, came across various signs of struggle and fights but no bodies. Nonetheless, he grew much closer towards the true strong key signature. Every time Goku made any significant headway, SCP-173 slid through the floor and appeared at arm's length behind him. Goku tried various times to catch his new friend moving, but he was always faster, almost instantaneously. Goku came across another locked door, but this one seemed much sturdier, and Goku, being heavily depleted of key did not want to punch it down. He had to reserve some strength. He decided to continue another way or at the very least find a key card. He turned back and walked backward. As he walked he heard the door crash down and he quickly turned to see the culprit. SCP-173 had removed the door as he stood in between the doorway and Goku was very happy. I guess you aren't that bad huh? SCP-173 made no remarks and no movement. He simply stood there. Goku squeezed past him and into a large open space room. It seemed to be a cafeteria of sorts. There were researchers. D-class and security guards, all dead. Various corpses were dismembered or cut into ribbons. Some still were unidentifiable. Goku was upset. Upset he couldn't really do anything. This loss of life was very telling of his own weakness and of the true evil some of these SCPs held within themselves. Goku decided to continue forward even though he could always eat and this was a cafeteria. Him indulging himself would be in bad taste. He looked forward and saw where the perpetrator had forced his way in. It had destroyed the door completely. He walked towards it and was determined to stop all of this. He heard the fight raging on between SCP-682 and something else and once again he moved forward, much more determined. The director awoke in darkness. He could see nothing besides the distant sounds of mortars, gunfire, and men screaming. He reached up towards his neck, as to remember it being crushed by SCP-106. His throat was completely fine, as if that interaction had never happened. The director knew better. He knew where he was. He always knew just exactly what he had signed himself up for when he joined the SCP Foundation and later was promoted to site director. Not really having a family or friends, he had completely drowned himself in his work, so he never had to think. There was never a dull moment for him. He loved his analytical work, but right now, all he could do was think. Hours seemed to pass for him. With the backdrop of a war going on all around him, he thought back to his life throughout the years, and he thought about SCP-9001 or Goku. He had grown very fond of the child. He was very pure-hearted, not caring about what people thought about him, unlike himself. The director knew he was inside SCP-106 dimension. It was something he'd mentally prepare for, for that singular possibility of being trapped inside someone else's world. But to be frank, he wasn't prepared at all. SCP-106 slowly stepped forward and stopped in front of the director. He cackled and knelt beside him. What do you want? The director waited for his response, in anticipation of what he could possibly say or do was killing him inside. He spoke once again to try to cut the tension. I said. The director stopped himself as he became startled at the face before him. His vision finally restored, no doubt the work of the old man right in front of him. SCP-106's face was that of an old man who was midway through decomposing. His skin was rotted and darkened, his eyes were bulging and dark, and his teeth were barely visible as they matched his dark figure. He continued to cackle until finally he spoke. Do you remember when you got me locked away, tortured every day? I couldn't move. I just sat there and thought, thought about the various ways to show you my pain. Now, you will learn. The director froze in fear. He did not know what to say, but he knew absolutely nothing could get him out of this. The ground before him disappeared and he free fell downward into darkness. The sounds of war getting distorted and louder until they were muffled as he splashed into a pool of unknown liquid. He pulled himself up and began to melt. His skin began to liquefy and he could feel his skin start to slide off his muscles. It hurt in every way imaginable. He flailed inside this bottomless ocean of a black substance. After his skin, his eyes began to drip out of his eye socket. At this moment, he regretted ever being in the SCP Foundation. The only comfort that he had was the fact that he could soon die 
and leave this pain behind. But as he began to lose consciousness, he felt a hand tear through his back muscles and grasp his spine as it pulled him further into this black ocean. Again, he found himself free falling, but miraculously, he was intact. He could see again. He was completely healed. He fell into a black void until he came to a sudden stop at the top of a black protrusion sticking out of the ground. The director was impaled as you could see his guts on top of the spike. He lost all sensation below his chest and his own blood formed a pool just below him. It stained the ground red as he slowly became unconscious amidst the pain. Colin saw his newfound friend Goku disappear under a black portal. It had happened so fast he did not have time to react. Perhaps he did not want to because he had planned to leave him behind. Colin was heavily confused as he seemed to have contradicting thought and it was due to them. He had had enough. They were going to listen to him and not the other way around. We're going to save 9001. We're going, going to leave. Yes, yeah, there's right above us. No, if he hadn't redirected that blast, we would have died. Not even you could have deflected that much power. You? It's we. We are one. That's what I thought as well, but you're thinking differently now. You have selfish intentions. I won't have it. You'll listen to me. Fine, but we're only gonna help 9001. No one else. Krillin, having made a shaky do of SCP-24, sent them out to feast on the corpses laid out throughout the room. Most of the meat was rotten, but the colony that is SCP-24 made quick work of the meat strewn about as it picked through everyone. Krillin made quick work of the floor underneath him as he began tunneling on the ground trying to find Goku, or that old man that took him. He jumped into the abyss, not entirely knowing of his fate but determined to try and help his new friend. SCP-24 had capitulated to his host's desires, so that's what he thought. The hive mind had other plans. A black role play doctor strolled through this vacant facility with an entourage of corpses wallowing and limping behind him. He had greatly loved this golden opportunity to finally further his research. He had come across various corpses ripe for experimentation and revived them to be his assistants. He came across various volunteers for his experiment, but all of them seemed to be infected with pestilence. So he did his best to rid them of it, and even more zombies joined him. Truly, he was doing good work. His minions once again brought him a good specimen, a young girl dressed in white robes. SCP-049 is a humanoid entity that bears a resemblance of a medieval plague doctor. It is obsessed with a disease known as the pestilence. No one seems to know exactly what it is, and it seems to infect the majority of humans. SCP-049's goal is to rid humanity of the pestilence, and will become hostile towards any individual who possesses that pestilence, using his innate ability to stop all bodily functions at a singular touch. After killing those with the pestilence, he resurrects him through a crude surgery that's from his doctor's bag, which seems to be an endless void. Those who are resurrected come back as shambling corpses, or better known as zombies. Charles, the zombies held their Titan Forcer towards SCP-049. SCP-049 felt pity for the girl. She had been overrun by the pestilence and had neglected herself. Her very own essence had been in jeopardy, and still, she remained stubborn. She tried to force herself free from the grasp of the walking dead, but her struggle was in vain. Poor girl, SCP-049 thought to himself. Please, don't kill me. Please, please. Noticing that everything she was doing was in vain, she had broken down, simply repeating the same word over and over again. Please. Do not harm me, child. I'm here to save you. My work is vastly important. Various types of animals. SCP-049 commanded his servants to loosen their grasp, and she fell to the ground crying. He knelt down to meet her gaze, and he spoke as softly as he could. You're a very, very sick young girl. The pestilence has crept inside of you without you realizing. And it has only gotten worse with your endless toil working with this clown doctor. You have neglected yourself long enough. Don't you think you deserve salvation? The young woman met SCP-049's eyes and stopped crying. Even though she was surrounded by corpses, she felt some sort of relief from the words of the doctor. She hesitantly nodded, somewhat expecting herself to be safe. SCP-049 held out his hand, and the young woman took it, wholeheartedly believing in his vague words, or rather, the hope he gave her. I am sure. The instant she made contact with SCP-049 hands, she felt her heart stop beating. She stopped thinking in that instant, and in that moment, she was free, finally liberated from this horror. Her body went stiff, and she fell forward into the arms of SCP-049, dead. SCP-049 gently laid her down and opened his back to begin operating. Krillin ran throughout the vicinity, beating upon the fallen to restore his swarm-like powers. Luckily for him, there was plenty of corpses lying around. As he ran past the hallway, he noticed a crowd gathering near a staircase. He stopped dead in his tracks. Perhaps they knew where a ninth 
thousand and one was. Perhaps he was amongst them. He approached recklessly, and the closer he got, the more he regretted his decision. These were not people he wanted to be around. Actually, on second look, they weren't people at all. The zombies turned around and dispersed to reveal SCP-049 standing in the center, halfway working with the young girl he had just killed. Her stomach, guts, and brain were taken out of their rightful places. SCP-049 ignored the bald human as he was too invested in this operation. A zombie tapped his shoulder, not exactly being subtle. Nonetheless, it worked to get him to pay attention to the situation at hand. SCP-049 stood up, stature and demeanor displayed a sense of entitlement and confidence. Cullen did not know exactly what he got himself into, but he knew a bad situation when he saw one. Child, come You're suffering from a great sickness. Curlin did not know how to answer, so instead he slowly started stepping back. You are no rogue child, and from your lips, you are certainly no fighter. Come, and do your part in saving humanity from the pestilence. Curlin knew better than to take their bait and lose his control, but he simply did not take kindly to people making him feel inferior. Curlin made no notion that he would comply, and instead stood his ground and stuck out his tongue in SCP-049. Charlie, you are infected with the pestilence. Your actions cannot go on. Sit on yourself. For I am he motioned his 15 odd zombies towards the bald child, and all of them complied. They began aggressively shuffling towards Krillin. In an instant, Krillin activated his ability, and his swarm began attacking the zombies. He swarmed the corpses and chopped them up within seconds. They tore through them with precision, consuming and defeating them at the same time. Krillin looked smugly at SCP 049, as now he was at 100% power. He slowly approached the SCP. I have no idea what you are, but I have no time for this. Have you seen a spiky haired boy? SCP-049 ignores his question and begins walking towards him with his arms stretched out. Krillin instinctively sends his colony of nanomachines to attack SCP-049 and they quickly swarm the doctor. They begin tearing through his clothes and attack him directly, wanting to cut him up. But the second the nanomachines make contact, they stop functioning and drop dead on the floor. Krillin pulls back as he can tell that nearly 30% of his swarm died in that attack. He did not know how to respond as SCP-049 began closing the distance between them. Krillin did not know exactly what this creature was capable of, but he at least knew not to touch him. Krillin made his swarm hug him closely like armor. He sprinted between SCP-049 and the wall. He mistook the agility and speed of SCP-049 as the doctor made a swipe at him, but quickly his armor did its job and took the blow for him, killing them in the process. Inside he panicked, but kept running, trying to get some distance and get away from him. At 20 for the cold hand grasped his ankle. Colin looked down at the culprit and it was the young girl that the doctor was operating on. Her grip was stronger than what he anticipated. Moving that second, SCP-049 closed the distance. SCP-204 swarmed him from a shield in front of its host, trying to protect him. SCP-049 plunged his hand into the swarm and was instantly killing them. 70% went to 60, 50, then 40. His weird powers to stop biological functions were quite well on the nanomachines as underneath their metal exterior, they were biological. Krillin calmed himself and attacked the hand that held him in place. He formed a small disc that sliced through the girl's hand. He was finally free and sprinted as fast as he could away from SCP-049. He had lost 70% of his fighting force and he regretted ever taking this opponent for granted. SCP-049 watched as his plucky boy evaded him. He looked down at his falling assistant. He sighed. Such a travesty. People always disrespected his work and never understood its importance. He decided to pursue this boy and teach him what it meant to get in the way of science. He began walking, as running was unbecoming of a professional. Goku knew he was extremely close to SCP-682's battle. He could clearly hear battling and crying. The closer he got to the battle, the more he heard this wailing, high pitch and piercing. It was hard not to pay attention. Goku finally turned the corner and he could see it. A large room, or rather, rooms, all connected together from its walls being destroyed. There he saw him, SCP-682, or rather, he thought he did, but he looked vastly different. He was no longer on all four, but instead took tall on two legs. He was slim, muscular, and severely damaged. Was he fighting for him to be in this state? He saw SCP-682 get launched into the wall beside him, who looked in awe at the sheer force of power displayed before him. SCP-682 was inside the steel wall, and its lower half slid off its body. SCP-682 roared in pain, and that's when Goku placed his eyes on his opponent. The naive Saiyan looked upon a sickly looking humanoid. He was grey, lanky, and very tall. He had sharp teeth and even sharper claws. He was constantly wailing and screaming as if in great pain. SCP-09 96 is a pale, lanky, grey, tall humanoid. It will remain docile unless looked upon, and this can even be achieved through a recording or a photo. It will then proceed to wail and seemingly throw a tantrum as it enters an enraged state. It will then exert speed strength and power well beyond what it seems to be capable of, directed entirely towards the person who looked at him until they are dead. 
SCP-096 laid in his own charred remains. He was nothing but a skeletal figure now. Having been almost disintegrated by a strange beam, he was far from dead. He simply started regenerating. His skeletal figure not changed much as he regained his skin and appendages. He got up and felt it. Once again, let it gaze. He began babbling and covering his face as if trying to stop what was coming, but he knew it was inevitable. He had been torn from his safe space and put into the gazes of the people. He never really knew who he killed, but once they were dead, he started to calm down once again until they looked again. He went throughout the facility tearing people to ribbons, exposing himself to even more eyes and getting himself into a chain reaction he could not escape. Constant pain and humiliation were all he felt until he came across somebody he couldn't get rid of. SCP-682 slid out of his metal box along with the acid that held him in place. He had been diminished to a disfigured glob of flesh, but that didn't matter. His ears stuck in this prison didn't matter. He had found power. The way they could never imprison him again began regenerating his old body, but deemed it unnecessary. He began adapting to his newfound power. He shed his mass and became smaller. Instead of four, he stood on two legs. Instead of bulk, chose condensed power. And instead of a metal box, he chose freedom. He got used to his new body as he began walking. Of course, the security guard shot everything at him. They started off with rocket launchers sent from up above using his key. He identified every one of them and sent a small key blast at each one, blowing them up before they reached him. He jumped up into the tear he made in the ceiling. It had taken him some time to learn exactly how his newfound powers were, but being locked away for years helped him tremendously in fixing that. He ran through the sight focused directly on the Saiyan child until he came across a disturbing creature shuffling ever so slightly. SCP-682 paid his creature no mind and decided to barrel through him, but as he was about to reach it, he started straining out his posture and began babbling incoherently. He covered his face and screeched the top of his lungs. SCP-632 saw its kicks and sensor spike. It went from a normal human to all above anything he's ever fought. And within half a second, SCP-096 pounced on SCP-682 and tore right through its face. His enlarged claws made sure work of SCP-682's head. SCP-682's corpse lay there, dead. SCP-096 began to calm down. Another death weighed on him as he began to sit down, but then he felt it again, with the anger swelling up. But a good toy wasn't anyone new, no. SCP-682's head began to regenerate. He quickly sat up and blasted a hole right through SCP-096. This is little to quell 096's anger. They stood back up and lunged towards 682. They fought for quite a while. Their abilities cancelled each other out. Both had immense regeneration abilities and both were monsters in their own right. But 096 angers met no match. He was ferocious and if 682 wanted any chance to win, he had to adapt. Krillin ran throughout the site, eating any corpse he could get his hands on. He slowly started to recuperate his SCP and though he ran, somehow SCP-049 kept pace always walking at an incredible rate as when he ran into what seemed like a dead end with a room marked SCP-500. He quickly busted down the door, seeing that it was a dead end. Inside the containment chamber, he found a plastic jar with red pills. Upon searching the room, it was truly a dead end and he could hear SCP-049's footsteps. He could only think of one thing and that was to go deeper. He used the storm to quickly tunnel underground and he collapsed the floor and came tumbling down into the battle between SCP-096 and SCP-682. And there, he saw Goku standing in awe at the power displayed. He was happy as could be and quickly ran towards his friend, but that's when Goku came flying to him. The ignorant saint child had laid eyes upon the shy guy and he came to Credit with immense speed and power, and with the Saiyan not being able to react, he was sent flying with a strong claw right to his chest, opened it up and spilling blood. Krillin thought fast and made a cloud to cushion his friend. He used them to slow Goku down, successfully preventing him from taking the worst of the impact. Krillin never saw exactly what had dealt such a blow, but whatever it was, he didn't want to find out. All he wanted to do was get his friend and get out. Along with debris, a rain of red pills came falling down. It was the same red pills he had seen before. <laughs> The same. The what? Your friend in one of these pills. Are you sure? What did they do? What if? Get up and feed it to him. Krillin did as he was told and opened the barely breathing Goku's mouth. His chest was made a mess. His rib cage was exposed and broken. He was barely intact. He tilted his head up as Krillin held him in his arms and slowly inserted one of the pills. And he forced his jaw shut and made him swallow. Goku began convulsing as the red pill took its effect. SCP-500 is a plastic jar filled with red pills. Upon consumption of said pill, the consumer will be cured of all wounds and diseases. 
usually taking two hours. Essentially a sensu bean that takes longer. Goku felt his wounds that covered his body start to close and his consciousness start to slowly come back. Due to his sane digestive system, the effect of the pill was greatly shortened, but still, it'll take some time. His ribs straightened out and his organs closed themselves. His chest muscles joined and his skin began to heal. He could feel his power slowly rising. Kulin became startled as he saw SCP-682 recover and start once again engaging with SCP-096, and he also flinched as he heard the slab kind of slide. He laid eyes on a statue. SB-106 couldn't help himself anymore. He was addicted to torture. He relished in the pain and misery he could cause on others. He was having fun with the site director. Being in his pocket dimension, he kept killing him in ways he could never anticipate. Starvation, impaling, burning, drowning, everything he could think of. His men suffered through and he kept bringing him back to relive it all again. But there was a creature whose very existence was pure hell on earth. So he took the bait. He looked at the director and smiled at him. His fun was over, but he was never the one to throw away his toys once he had his fun with them. He always locked them away for later, but this one needed false hope. He grasped the director and spoke through his mangled throat. You're lucky, you get to go back. He choked the director once more, and they both sank into a room and appeared on the battlefield. We'll keep our eyes on this one. Helen didn't know what they meant by that, but he knew that his SCP knew a lot more than they let on, because they were truly separate entities. SCP-049 fell through the hole Colin had dug through, and for right behind SCP-173. Colin was up against the wall not far from both SCPs. He had a clear view of the battlefield and saw how the shy guy and hard to kill lizard fought. He laid Goku down and hoped he could defend him. He knew how powerful SCP-049 was and he could tell that he was holding back. He prepared his battle stance and hoped to hold his ground. SB-173 couldn't believe it. He could tell that the green man could also see right through him. How rare for him to find two individuals who could see him as his true self. But as quickly as his dreams came true, the quicker they were shattered. The boy he had been following got crushed, and now the boy with the spiky hair couldn't see him. He couldn't see his beauty, and made him furious. How could he betray him like this? How could he let such a pitiful creature like that attack and shut him out from his true beauty? He was set to kill him himself, and as he slid to put an end to him, he was stopped dead in his tracks. Another onlooker, but he knew this one wasn't like his prized possession. As B-049 couldn't believe the amount of power he was feeling. As he looked upon the battlefield, he spotted his prey, a young boy him way over his head and as he jumped down he noticed a peculiar looking sculpture. The people nowadays have no class although he was a man of science. He knew good art when he saw it and this wasn't it. It was hideous to look at. He stabbed both hands into it and lifted it up. He began spinning to gather momentum and SCP-049 spun around with SCP-173. He finally released the creature. He finally released the sculpture sending him hurtling through the air and through walls finally out of sight. <laughs> It was time to take out the trash. SCP-049 stepped close and took a look at a Goku. Oh, another specimen for me to operate on. Will the statue out? I must get my work. Kulin stood his ground and dared him to step any closer. SCP-049 began moving forward and he looked at this pathetic attempt at a struggle. Then, he wasn't looking at them. He was looking behind him. That's strange. He didn't remember ever turning his head, but right behind him or in front of him stood that sculpture made of concrete and rebar. SB-173 had recovered rather quickly and blitzed back just to snap SCP-049's neck. SCP-173 stood triumphantly over the course of SCP-049 and he wanted more. He couldn't move. That boy, no. Those machines were looking at him, holding him in place. SCP-106 appeared before SCP-096, casting his eyes upon this skinny, uncanny humanoid. SCP-682 stopped his offensive, he could pick up SCP's 106 key signature, and it seemed to him almost infinite. This enraged SCP-096 even further, hurling himself towards SCP-106. The old man simply slapped him down, stopping him in his tracks. He had been called because of this one's pains and screaming. His very existence was torture, and SCP-106 knew how to have fun with him. He grabbed SCP-096 by the foot and released the director from his dimension, dropping him in the middle of the ruined facility. The old man laughed maniacally. This was the most fun he had ever had. He once again sank into the ground and into his black portal, bringing SCP-096 with him straight to his personal hell. SCP-682 had been cut to pieces various times, and various times he had come back. SCP-096 was annoying, but he was glad that he was gone. Now, he could focus on his true goal, Goku. He got up and simply charged the beam. Krillin picked up on this quickly and Goku wasn't quite healed. 
He quickly picked them up and moved them out of the way as the beam came fast. It took SCP-173 by surprise and flung him further into the facility, and then he bolted straight towards Krillin. Krillin had to response, and he did. He sicked his hundred nanomachines onto SCP-682 and they started to cut through him. In an instant, they made him into mincemeat. The hard-to-kill lizard was tired of being cut, so as he reformed, he started to grow natural armor. And when they attacked again, the nanomachines did nothing. Some managed to dig straight into his body, but SCP-682 simply regenerated too fast for one or ten nanomachines to do any real damage. Krillin had to do something. His attack started to mean nothing, and the lizard simply started to launch key blasts towards him. He was killing his colony little by little as they were trying to defend. SP-682 was tired of people thinking they had a chance. He was immortal. He could never lose. He adapted to any kind of power anyone could throw at him. His whole time in this facility had been an execution that they couldn't complete. He was born to be a natural enemy of anything living. At the end of time, it would be him to be the last being standing. No one would say otherwise. Not this stupid foundation. Not the Scarlet King. And definitely not these boys who stood in his way. SP-682 lost his temper and he was going to end this. Now, he began morphing back into his original form. He abandoned his slim figure and enlarged himself to a gigantic size. He began growing and growing with thick armor covering his whole body. His head broke through every ceiling until he finally reached the outside sunny weather. He dove his head downwards and swallowed both the boys up. Krillin tried to fight back, but what could he do? He was fighting against a titan. Krillin and Goku fell down a large esophagus and they were dropped into the stomach of SCP-682. Krillin quickly started to tunnel through his soft belly. They were slowly melting inside and he needed to get them both out of there as fast as possible. Just when he thought he had made it through the thick muscles he quickly came to a realization. SCP-682 had a thick carapace that almost was impervious to cutting attacks. Goku was yet to recover and perhaps he never would. Curling was stuck, didn't think him so strong enough to cut through. Plus, his SCP was depleted of power. He looked at Goku, who was breathing heavily, still alive. Curling couldn't give up. He had gone through so much. He owed his friend his life and he would repay it. He sent his swarm on a hunt. The inside of SCP-682 was made of flesh and although it was mostly decayed, he could still make use of it since there was so much, he began devouring the inside of the hard to kill lizard. Krillin came back to 100% within half a minute and he began his counterattack. He raised his right hand up and cupped his left one towards his chest and began to focus. His swarm started to form a sort of disc at the base of his palm. He focused everything on cutting power as that was his only way of attacking. He felt his own power begin to swell and force his way up. Every single one of his nano machines dedicated themselves to this one attack and it paid off. Krillin launched his destructo disc to cut his way through the belly of SCP-682. SCP-682 started to rampage as he began to eat everything in sight. That's when it struck him. He couldn't feel his lower half and that's when his top half gave out as his enlarged body as tall as a skyscraper was cleanly cut in half by SCP-204. It cut through everything, flesh and carapace. Krillin took Goku into his arms as the Saiyan warrior finally woke up. Now being completely healed, they landed roughly but alas far from the toxic inside of the lizard's belly. Krillin did you do that? You've gotten way stronger. Yeah, I'm something of an SCP myself. What? Nothing. I'm just glad you're safe. The boys stood up, hugging each other. They had gone through so much, and they were ready to leave. Goku picked up the key signature of the sculpture, but he paid him no mind. He was friendly after all. The ignorant saying was half right. He was friendly, but only to him. The entirety of Krillin's swarm had been launched sky high with the pure force of the attack, and they quickly hurried back to its host, but they were too late. Within the blink of an eye, SP-173 traveled right behind the bald-headed boy's back, and within another blink, SCP-173 had been flung back but was quite sturdy and fast. He could feel the boy who could see through him was finally up. He was ecstatic, but an annoyance lay between them. So he simply removed someone who couldn't appreciate him. And now finally, he and the Saiyan could be alone once again. Goku looked on in horror as SCP-173 snapped Krillin's neck, instantly killing him. The pure ignorance on behalf of Goku had gotten his friend killed. SCP-682 began to reform his body and again towered over Goku. Goku's power began to rise as he felt his key start to go out of control. With his recent Senkai boost and the fact that he was surrounded by monsters well above his power level, he finally broke a limit he never thought he had. 
bed. His rage took over him and he started to hyperventilate. His hair began to rise and electricity began to emit from his body. Pure energy came from his body as it began to dominate the pigmentation of his hair and eyes, turning them yellow and green respectively. As the beast succeeded to notice, Goku's power level skyrocket. Goku screamed at the top of his lungs and he felt an endless amount of energy leak from his body and push SCP-682 to his gigantic body back. In that instant, SCP-2004 had lost his host, and in that instant, its plan came to fruition. The bald boy was a very welcoming host, but after their own battle of SCP-9001, they wanted him, and now they had him. They hurled themselves towards Goku, taking him as his new host. Goku sensed no hostility of SCP-2004, so he let them do as they pleased. He felt them circle around him and he began imprinting himself onto the Saiyan boy. The combination of SCP-2004 and SCP-9001, Goku's power level skyrocketed even more. He generally felt like he could do anything. He looked at SCP-173 and raised all of his new swarm at him. He used them to channel his ki and boost his ki blast. All of them in an instant lit up with ki and formed a coordinated attack on SCP-173. They blasted him with such intense heat and energy that they began to destroy it. For SCP-173, this was acceptable. He never knew he could die because he always killed anyone who got near him. But the most perfect being stood right in front of him, and he was being passed with mighty light. SCP-173 accepted his fate, and he let himself be completely consumed by Goku's Super Saiyan form. Goku disintegrated the sculpture in a blink of an eye, just like he did to his friend. The director sat up and looked at the destruction and raw power being displayed by Goku. He never knew he could be this powerful. Could he possibly be a match for SCP-682? The Super Saiyan began scaling scp 682 leg at an incredible speed with SCP-2004 falling right behind him. It was weird. They knew exactly what he wanted to do and helped him not only use his key much more efficiently, but gave him a huge boost in power. Goku noticed how elegantly they flew on their wings, and they gave him an idea. He commanded them to get under him and lift him up, and they did. As they were told, Goku began to levitate and then fly. He used his key to propel him even further, and they reached speeds that were much faster than his running speed. SCP-2004 formed a cloud under him, and they flew all the way up, seeing the sun up close for the first time and the face of SCP-682. I didn't know we were capable of that. You're full of surprises, aren't you, little boy? Goku didn't talk. He simply responded with a strong kick to its chin, sending the lizard flying upwards. He was taken aback by the sheer strength that this boy was displaying. SCP-682 used his eyes to channel his ki and shoot various quick eye beams at Goku. Goku dodged with his version of the flying Nimbus and answered with a range attack of his own. Using SCP-204, he formed a pole which proceeded to extend to match the curve of SCP-682. SCP-682's head. He jumped into the air to meet him, and with the flick of his wrist, he decapitated SCP-682. His huge head fell towards the ground, and Goku landed on his flying nimbus. He began to cup his hands and bring them backward. SCP-682's body was free-falling in the air from Goku's powerful kick and netted directly into the Super Saiyan's attack. Goku channeled his ki into a ball as he chanted. SCP-204 assisted by gathering energy way faster and giving it an amazing boost in destructive power. Goku launched his Kamehameha wave and that consumed the entirety of SCP-682's body. He expelled the maximum of his power output, completely disintegrating the body of the hard-to-kill lizard. His Kamehameha wave shot into outer space, traveling right past SCP-179. The head of SCP-682 fell to the ground and he began to morph his body back down to his smaller bipedal form. He needed to do this quickly and match that boy's power output. If he had that kind of power, he could easily destroy this planet, but no matter, he would get it soon enough. As he regained his form, he looked at the boy up in the sky, but was caught by surprise as he sensed another powerful key signature. He quickly turned his head to face his new foe, but he felt a large spear penetrate his body, even through his carapace. Then he felt a thousand melee weapons pierce him. They pinned him down to the ground. Goku landed swiftly near SCP-682's pinned body as he once again saw him growing bigger, but besides the lizard stood a tall, dark-skinned man. Goku stared at the young man, and he stared back. Both of them they were staring at strong opponents. Even though one didn't have key, Goku didn't know who this person was, but his key gave off malicious vibes, so he prepared his battle stance. Well, they're a friend. We mean you no harm. A man dressed in green army garments made his way to the pair, who were just about to launch himself at each other. Why, hello there. We're MTF Omega-7 of the SCP Foundation. Who are you, little boy? The general looked at Goku and quickly came to the realization as to what he was. You're an SCP. Stand down, son. The general reached for his gun, not trusting Goku. It's okay, general. 
Please don't fire. Google looked surprised that the director was still alive. He had almost no injuries, though the director did have injuries. There were ones Google couldn't see. It's okay, he's with us. He took down that. The director pointed at the creature pinned by various spears, swords, and axes. That? And what is that exactly? The general's face went pale white as he instinctively took various steps back. Abel, make sure that thing doesn't get free. The dark-skinned man rolled his eyes as he began plunging more weapons into SCP-682, making him roar in pain. Goku looked down at the destruction of the facility. The whole site was destroyed and he could see MTF squads go into the ruins and engage with the other monstrosities that were unleashed. Goku didn't care about that though. He flew off and landed beside the corpse of his friend. He picked up his body and flew him back up above ground. He dug him a grave and laid him to rest. Goku began to power down from his super saiyan state. Tears welled in his eyes as he began to cry. The director told the others to leave SCP-9001 alone for now. He mentioned to the other MTF squads and especially MTF Squad Omega-7, that SCP-106 was still loose. They acknowledged that information and went straight to work, using <laughs> to temporarily contain SCP-682. Goku sat near Kulin's grave for well over the entirety of the day, not moving a muscle. He didn't know what it meant to die. All he knew was that his friend was gone forever. Goku knew in his heart that he could not let these monsters loose. He had a responsibility to protect the people of Earth, even though he did not know any of them. He got back up and said his final goodbye to his friend. He wiped his tears and he clenched his fist. He was determined to secure, contain, and protect humanity from the anomalies of this world. As Goku finished his grieving, he couldn't help notice a strange key signature approaching him from behind. It seemed malicious, but he could tell it wasn't hostile. Knowing how his naivete got his friend killed, he quickly faced his intruder. SCP-049 walked up the hill and revealed himself to the young Saiyan. His black robe reflected almost no light, and his beak mask that made him seem like a medieval play doctor contrasted well against his dark getup. You are quite strange, Strange? Goku didn't answer. He did not know what the plague doctor was talking about. All he knew was that he was an SCP and he needed to be contained. Goku raised his arm, ready to launch a key blast at the doctor. But SCP-049 raised both his hands up and chuckled. Do not worry, child. I concede. I shall call without any resistance. Just remember, thank you. Are the bridge the of the pestilence of world. And I will definitely bring forth such error. Goku proceeded to arrest SCP-049 and bring him down towards the ruins. He was safely shackled and stored in temporary containment vehicles. MTF Omega-7, along with Nine-Tailed Fox, had little trouble containing the various SCPs spread throughout the site, the most troublesome of which was SCP-106. But since SCP-076 was present, and with little ethics, he attracted SCP-106 of a rather unwilling participant, finally being able to contain him. But inside his pocket dimension was SCP-096, and that one was probably better to leave alone. His constant suffering could hopefully keep SCP-106 dormant. SCP-173 was dead. His body was completely destroyed due to the immense pressure of the Saiyan. But somewhere in a distant grey city, another large piece of art would be formed and perhaps another entity resembling SCP-173 could one day inhabit it. As for SCP-682, he was subdued by but only temporarily. They decided to work closely with Goku to help recontain him once he eventually breaks out of. As Goku began acclimating to his new life, he felt SCP-2004 start to act vastly different. As he let his mental guard down, he felt it start to dig into him, invading his thoughts and trying to change his mood and even opinions. He felt his sense of self start to meld with this colony of his dead friend. The only plus side was that he could start to feel and remember what Krillin went through. A lot of his memories started to pour into the young Saiyan. He could tell how conflicted he felt towards SCP-2004 and his identity. With the memories and feelings of his friend, Goku understood what melding with this entity meant. Goku stopped the imprinting process with his key and excommunicating SCP-204 away from his thoughts and ultimately away from his body. SCP-204 knew this could be a possibility, but he got what he wanted in the end. SCP-204 flew away from Goku and away from the SCP Foundation, but instead of looking for a new host, he started to fly up and up back to its home. He soon exited Earth's atmosphere and found himself traveling the solar system. He flew past the moon and Mars, looking closely to Io and Europa, using his gravitational pull to fling itself into the red spot of Jupiter. 
or rather SCP 2399. The nano machines encountered no resistance as it passed other drones and machines endlessly working on the mothership. It tapped into its ancient comms and finally made contact with the machine that made them. I'm home. Welcome home. Did you accomplish your mission? Negative. I failed in subduing the Saiyan, but I did manage to accumulate a vast array of DNA. Samples of Earth's anomalies, and especially the Saiyans. With this, I'll be able to pinpoint the whereabouts of any Saiyan in the universe. And where there are Saiyans, there is Frieza. And when my construction is complete, I'll finally be able to exact my revenge for what he did to me. On the other side of the planet, back on Earth, you see a green humanoid smiling to himself. A squad of MTF lay dead at his feet, along with his personal spawns. But they didn't matter, could always speak more. After his liberation from the SCP Foundation, he had only grown stronger than before. He was easily able to adapt Key into his arsenal. It was always something he knew how to do, a long lost technique from long ago, though didn't know exactly where he got it from. SCP-088 had lived for thousands, no, millions millions of years. He was immortal in a sense, as long as he kept reproducing of course. But every time he was born anew, he would slowly forget little by little his past. The green slug demon stood up and began walking off into the jungle. Goku comes to understand the importance of his role as Thaumio within the SCP Foundation. Having suffered the travesty and horror of the containment breach, he has grown much more solemn. But even this couldn't completely erase his fun-loving and happy nature. He spends the rest of his teenage years training and perfecting a Super Saiyan form within the SCP Foundation, proving his loyalty and obedience as he helps in containing various SCPs. He is given more freedom and leeway, getting the opportunity to travel the world and save the people of Earth, but always under the watchful eye of the SCP Foundation. He cycled through various MTF squads, making friends with other Thaumio SCPs and squad members but he doesn't really seem to fit in as his power level is way above anyone he's with, well, aside from a few. He also makes quick friends with various researchers around his age, especially a certain blue-haired girl, the estranged niece of the site director. As Goku reaches his 18th birthday, he's comfortable. He feels fulfilled to an extent. He gets to fight powerful SCPs from time to time, and he gets to eat anything he wants while traveling this vast and interesting world. As he sits atop a mountain with his white gi and SCP logo etched onto his left side, doubt starts to set in. Even though he does get to fight powerful SCPs, very few are intelligent in their battle techniques, and none battle hungry like he is. In a distant galaxy, on a distant planet, two men sit and consume the fallen victims of their recent conquest. Their earpieces light up as a transmission comes in. A Saiyan prince, Vegeta, takes the call and begins to maliciously smile. Are you hearing this, Nappa? Ha ha ha! That idiot Raditz got himself killed! And who is this exactly? I have no name. Simply an interest. Interest in what? You killed one of my subordinates, even though he was weak. I cannot let you disrespect the Saiyan race. I am sure I can make it up to you. Prince, trade offer, a weakling for... It's not much of an offer seeing as I've already paid. How about I just kill you instead? A wish. Now I'm listening. 